In this video, I'd like to continue talking about dividing quadratics by linear expressions, though this time we'll focus on when there are remainders. And to solve problems like these where when we divide a quadratic by some linear expression, we're going to end up with a polynomial, p of x, plus some remainder term where k is going to be an integer and k will be divided by the linear factor that we're originally dividing by. And the way to approach these problems is to use a technique known as polynomial long division. So before we look at exactly how polynomial long division works, let's just remind ourselves how long division works with just real numbers. So let's say that we're going to take 4 and we'll divide it into, let's say, 682. And remember, the way that the long division algorithm works is to follow a step-by-step -step procedure to carry out this division. So we'll start by asking ourselves, how many whole times does 4 go into 6? And it goes in one whole time, so we'll put that above the 6. And then we multiply this 1 by 4. 1 times 4 is 4, so that we can find the remainder. We can find what was left over after 4 went into 6 one whole time. And we do this by subtracting. 6 minus 4 is 2. And now what we do is we bring down the next number. So we're going to bring down an 8. And then we repeat the process. So how many whole times does 4 go into 28? Well, it goes in 7 whole times. Now we multiply to find the remainder. 7 times 4 is 28. We subtract here, we get 0. And we bring down the 2. And how many whole times does 4 go into 2? Well, it doesn't go into 2. It's bigger than 2. So it goes in 0 whole times. And now we're going to have a remainder. And you might remember writing R2 to signify our remainder here. But another way to write this, let me change colors. If we had 682 and we're dividing by 4, this is equal to 170. And then we have 2 left over. And we're going to put that 2 over what we originally divided by. So 170 and 2 fourths, which of course simplifies to 170 and a half. But the main idea is that you take your remainder and you put it over what we call the divisor, the number that you're dividing by. So you can also check this by just re-multiplying this number by 4. If we take 170 and 2 fourths and we multiply it by 4, we should get back our original number, 682. We're literally just taking this equation here and multiplying both sides by 4. So 170 multiplied by 4, we can do... 4 times 100, that's 400, and 4 times 70 is 280. You add 400 and 280 together, you get 680. And then 4 multiplied by 2 fourths, the 4s cancel, and you just get 2. So this is 680 plus 2, which we know is 682. So that's a way to check your work, and that idea will also work with the polynomial long division. So now that we have reminded ourselves how to carry out long division, let's think about how it works with polynomials. And it's fairly similar, but with a couple differences. So let's start by rewriting our expression here, x squared plus 4 divided by x minus 3. We have our quadratic up top and our linear term down below. And we're going to write this as a long division problem. So we'll put our divisor, what we're dividing by, this x minus 3 on the outside. And we put our dividend, the number we're dividing into, on the inside. And one key difference is that we have to write a term for the missing term here. Since x squared plus 4, notice it doesn't have the linear term here in this polynomial. So when you're carrying out polynomial long division, we need to put essentially a placeholder for that missing term. We're going to rewrite this as x squared plus 0x plus 4. And this is important when we carry numbers down. 
So if you're missing terms in your polynomial, you need to put a placeholder there. So we'll put x squared plus 0x plus 4 inside the box here. And now we proceed in a very similar fashion. We're going to ask how many whole times does x minus 3 go into this x squared plus 0x? Or another way to phrase it that helps make sense of it a little bit better is we're going to ask what would we multiply this term by, this divisor by, to get x squared? So what would we multiply x by to get x squared? And we would multiply by x. And now we want to find the remainder. So we take x and we multiply it by x minus 3. So x times x, that's x squared. And x times minus 3 is minus 3x. And now we subtract to find that remainder. And if you're doing this correctly, you should end up with the same terms so that they cancel each other out. So we do x squared minus x squared, that's 0. And keep in mind, we're subtracting this whole thing here. So it's a good idea to put parentheses around this so that you can remind yourself you're distributing this negative to each. So now we take 0x and we subtract negative 3x. Or in other words, we're adding 3x. So 0x plus 3x is just 3x. And notice if we didn't put this 0x here, we would have a 4 and those are no longer like terms. So they're not going to match up correctly, which is why you need this placeholder. So once we find the remainder, rem remember we just repeat the process. So now we ask, what would we multiply x by to get 3x? And we would multiply by positive 3. So let me change colors for that. So we're going to multiply now to find our remainder. So we do 3 times x, that's 3x. Oh, and I did forget to bring down the 4 here. So always remember, once you complete the process, to bring down the next number. And then we do 3 times minus 3, which is negative 9. And now we subtract to find that remainder. And again, put it in parentheses so that you can remember to distribute that negative. So 3x minus 3x, that's 0x. That's what we should expect always. And then we have positive 4 minus negative 9, or plus 9, which is positive 13. And since we have no numbers left to bring down, this is our remainder. And remember, you're going to put your remainder over your divisor, over that linear factor. So in other words, this is k from our problem up here. So we get plus 13 divided by x minus 3. And these problems can be checked. So what we found is that this x squared plus 4 over x minus 3, this is just equal to x plus 3 plus 13 divided by x minus 3. So to check this, let me make a little bit of room. We'll work over here now. So to check, we're going to take our equation here, and we're going to multiply both sides by this linear factor, by x minus 3. So to check this, we're going to take our x plus 3 plus 13 over x minus 3, what we found as the answer. This is what we think is the answer. And we're just going to multiply by x minus 3. And multiplying each side by x minus 3, it'd cancel out on the left. And we should get back x squared plus 4. So that's what we're trying to find. So we just need to simplify this. So it's a bit of work. We need to distribute this x minus 3 to all three of these terms here. So when we do that, we get x minus 3. We're distributing it to the x first. Then we have x minus 3 times 3. And when we distribute it to our remainder term, notice the x minus 3s are going to cancel each other out, and we just get 13. So that is a nice simplification you should get when you multiply by this divisor. Now we need to distribute the x to both of these terms and the 3 to both of these terms. So down here we get x times x, which is x squared. We get minus 3x. Over here we get 3 times x, so that's plus 3x. And minus 3 and 3, that's minus 9. And of course we still have that plus 13. 
Now notice that minus 3x and 3x cancel each other out. So we get x squared and then minus 9 plus 13, that is positive 4. So we did get back what we expected, which means that we can feel confident this is in fact the correct answer. So we can put that in the box, that when we carry out this division, we get x plus 3 plus 13 over x minus 3.